skateworkers pay $5 per hour. The price includes skates. The rink is open Monday through Friday, 4 to 6 p.m., Saturdays, 1 to 6 p.m., and Sundays, 1 to 4 p.m. Skating at the Farmington Civic Center, 200 West Arrington in downtown Farmington. Hi, I'm Don Glass. And I'm Yael Cassander. And we host a Moment of Science. The world is always posing questions, and science is always in pursuit of answers. A Moment of Science offers many of those answers in a timely moment of entertainment and enlightenment. We hope you'll tune in. For more information about a Moment of Science or to download our latest podcasts, visit us at amomentofscience.org. Listen weekday afternoons at 545 on KSJE. Sure, the 92nd Naturalist is all about animals and plants, but it's also about us humans. After all, what creature is more amazing? We're the most creative and destructive, intelligent and foolish, loving and hateful beings on Earth. And we've come to have a significant effect, good or bad, on everything we touch. I'm Thane Maynard. Tune into the 92nd Naturalist and find out how we're interacting with the natural world today. Listen every weekday afternoon during the KSJE Evening News at 5.30. KSJE is supported by San Juan Regional Medical Center, your community hospital with a rich heritage that dates back to before New Mexico was a state. We've been improving the health of the Four Corners since 1910. As a nonprofit hospital, San Juan Regional Medical Center is a values driven organization. We strive to deliver on our mission to personalize health care and create vitality and enthusiasm in healing. We are here for you when you need us, offering a comprehensive range of inpatient, outpatient, and emergency care services. Eight thirty-seven, KSJE. You're listening to the Scott McLean Morning Program. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our viewers who are watching this morning on Facebook and YouTube. We're taking a look at the Coombers and Toltec Scenic Railroad Station in Chama, New Mexico, if you're watching our video feed this morning. Right now it's 26 degrees here in Farmington. I can assure you it's much colder in Chama at the moment. But our weather forecast, we're expecting a windy day today. We do have a wind advisory that kicks in about 2 p.m. this afternoon. The winds are going to kick up. It could be damaging winds as well, which is the reason for that advisory. From 2 p.m. this afternoon until 8 a.m. tomorrow. So it's going to be a windy night tonight as well. 46 for a high today in Farmington, 20 overnight. A little bit of wind again tomorrow with a high of 38 on Thursday, 18 Thursday night, and then sunshine 40 on Friday, 45 and 46 Saturday and Sunday, and overnight lows in the mid-20s. I'm Scott Micklin. My guest on the radio this morning, Pip Howard, is here from San Juan Regional Medical Center. She is the lactation consultant and also the childbirth educator at San Juan Regional Medical Center. And again, Pip, thank you for being here. Good morning, Scott, again. Good to have you here and sharing lots of good, useful information about breastfeeding and the benefits of breastfeeding and all the work that San Juan Regional is doing to make sure every woman who goes in to give birth to a baby knows about breastfeeding and, and how important it is and, and gets the support that they may need to be able to provide that to their new baby. Yes, that's what we've been doing. And over the years, it's been going on for many years at San Juan Regional, we've been working on breastfeeding. But over the last few years, we increased our staffing. So we went from having one part-time lactation consultant to having three uh, lactation consultants who are there six days a week, which is a huge increase in the number of hours. And that's, thank you, San Juan Regional, for supporting this process. Indeed. And the phone number for folks who have uh, asked us on Facebook if they would like more information or more support for breastfeeding awareness or more information is 505-609-6484. Yes, and that will get you directly to the breastfeeding office. If you do not get an answer, please leave us a voicemail. Um, we get a lot of missed calls, and we obviously don't have the time to go back through every missed call to see if it's a wrong number. Right. So please right. leave us a voicemail. Just asking us to call you back. You don't need to leave a lot of details, and we generally get back to you that day, or if it's late in the day, it'll be the next day. Okay. And again, these are this is a free service. It is absolutely a free service, whether you just want to talk about breastfeeding or whether you want to make an appointment to come in and see us. Us. and we do have quite a large number of moms who will follow up with us after they go home if they're having any difficulty of any kind with breastfeeding. 
Okay. Before um, we came on the air this morning, you had sent me a couple of uh, pamphlets and posters that, that are around San Juan Regional Medical Center with some important information about breastfeeding, and I want to share those with our viewers who are watching this morning, and we can talk about them for folks who are um, with us um, also on the radio. But um, there's one about 10 steps to successful breastfeeding, and do you mind going over those with us real quick this I morning? I can certainly go over those. You These... probably have them memorized. I bet you do. Well... I can, can kind of do most of them. <laughs> okay. But the 10 steps to successful breastfeeding, um, some of them may seem a little pedantic that we have to have a written breastfeeding policy, but we do have a breastfeeding policy. Right. We've updated it, our infant feeding policy um, to cover many aspects, the skin to skin immediately after birth and all of that. And then that is the first step. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second step is train all healthcare staff in the skills necessary to implement the policy. So as I mentioned earlier, we have been training all of our staff and inform all pregnant women about the benefits and management of breastfeeding. So this comes down many times to anybody taking childbirth classes, but to everybody who is seen, whether they're by our midwives at San Juan Regional or by the physicians, um, that all women are required to have had some education in breastfeeding, not just what, how are you planning to feed your baby. Right, a little so bit more than that. Give them a little bit of education about it to to what to expect because many women's grandmothers or mothers didn't breastfeed so they do need help right and then to help mothers initiate breastfeeding within an hour of birth so as I mentioned earlier putting babies skin to skin our all our staff are trained to help moms um, and then show mothers how to breastfeed and how to maintain lactation even if they're separated from their infants so whether that is separated immediately because baby has some health issues and has to be in our special care nursery right or whether that is more of a long-term plan where a mom is going back to work okay um practice number step number six give infants no food or drink other than breast milk unless medically indicated so we encourage all moms to try to exclusively breastfeed if there are health problems, if mom is not initially producing enough milk, we work with the moms to help elevate their production of milk. Um, if there is no, if they are not able to, we can we can provide them formula if they need help. Um, it's not the optimal thing to do. We try to keep all moms, so we do have breast pumps available, both hand pumps that we can give moms that are not just for hospital use but to take home. And then while they're in the hospital, uh, we have double electric breast pumps that we can loan to moms. Um, we also work with our case management to make sure that any mom who needs a double electric breast pump going home is able to get one, as that under the Affordable Care Act, that all women are covered for breast pumps. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Very good. And then the other steps would be? So step seven is practice rooming in. So simply encourage moms and babies, encourage moms to take care of their babies 24 hours a day as long as moms are able and babies are stable. Okay. So we really encourage moms to keep the babies with them because as many moms find I, you know, I've, I've talked to moms who said, you know, I'm so tired. Can't you just take my baby? Can you just take care of my baby for a little bit? And then 30 minutes later, they call us back. Who's taking care of my baby? <laughs> I want my baby in the room with me. Right. So it really, moms who do not have the babies in the room with them don't necessarily sleep any better. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And then encourage breastfeeding on demand. That seems fairly basic but what we mean by that is encourage moms to watch the baby for the baby telling them that they're hungry mm -hmm. so not a schedule our um, rule of thumb and well not the rule of thumb but the, in, the really what is recommended is that all newborns should breastfeed at least eight times in 24 hours now that averages out to every three hours but most babies are not hungry by the clock. I always joke with my parents when they come to classes that babies are not born with a wristwatch. A right. baby doesn't know it's been three hours, I better wake up and feed. A baby knows my tummy is empty. I want to feed now. And it can be difficult for moms because many times the first day of life babies are kind of sleepy and they don't wake up to feed 
every you know very often but the second day of life many babies are wide awake they want to feed more so I just we hope to teach every single mom what to expect to know that a baby doesn't you know write your note saying hey mom get me a sandwich right the babies have feeding cues they gnaw on their hands they open their mouths they kind of they do, um, for anybody who's listening on the radio, I'm putting my hand in my mouth. Right. Literally, they have their own sign language that tells you, yes, my baby's hungry. But when you can help a new mom know what to expect and know what that hand in the mouth may mean or, or other thing, or what that the first day is going to be kind of a maybe calmer day, but day two, get ready. Yeah, that can be very helpful. We do educate all the moms so that they know, to, so they know what to expect so that they know that on day one many babies are sleepy but keep baby skin to skin keep baby with you so you can watch them for those feeding cues and the more the parents are able to hold and keep the babies close the better babies generally do if your baby's over in the corner and you're visiting with your friends you may not be noticing that your baby's telling you opening their mouth and saying, Mom, I'm hungry right now. Right. Because when I ask parents, a lot of the time they think, well, my baby crying, my, that's my baby telling me they're hungry. Right. Baby crying is telling you the baby's in distress. Baby opening their mouth even a little bit or smacking their lips is probably telling you they're hungry. That's the signal. That's yes. the sign. Interesting. That's the sign. Okay. The and other the, steps? The step nine is give no pacifiers or artificial nipples to breastfeeding babies. If you think about it, if your baby is telling you that they're hungry by moving their lips and opening their mouth, if the baby has a pacifier in their mouth, especially these first few days, I always liken it to you're hungry and I give you a stick of gum. Right. Putting a pacifier not in Not very baby's nutritional, mouth. nothing it's at all. It's not very nutritional. Nothing's happening. Okay. And the, artificial and, and the mom nipples, would miss that sign, I suppose, too. The mom right? might miss that sign, yes. So babies wouldn't get the food they need. And it's very important during the first days of life that mom get adequate stimulation of her breasts. So we teach moms to hand express their breasts and we teach them how to use a pump should they need it to make sure that they're getting enough stimulation because it's an it's a two-way street. Mm -hmm. You've got the baby needing to eat and you've got the mom needing the stimulation of her breasts so that her body knows, yes, okay, my baby needs to eat. And it reinforces this process that the baby eating stimulates the breast. So if the baby and the mom are separated, we do a lot of teaching of those moms how to keep their milk supply going. That's important, sure. And the final step? And the final step is foster the establishment of breastfeeding support groups and refer mothers to them on discharge from the hospital or birth center. So we do have, um, we have our support that is available. And then we also, we have a new parents group that meets once a month. It's usually the last Monday of the month. Unfortunately, this month, the last two Mondays of the month are Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. So we decided we were not going to have that probably won't a support work very group well. this month. Right. But it is the last Monday of the month. You can again call us at 505-609-6484 if you want any information about that. And we always have a lactation consultant present at that new parent group and so we have the individual appointments available we do have that new parent group there is also a Facebook group if you go to someone regional Facebook page okay you can find our new parent group is on there um, and then also there's a La Leche League support group La Leche League is an uh, organization that was founded in the 1950s to support moms who are breastfeeding and unfortunately this time we don't have an in-person support group, but we have an amazing um, online Facebook support group with La Leche League of Farmington. And many moms have told me that they have been rather desperate at three o'clock in the morning and posted on that Facebook page and received a reply from another mom within about 30 minutes, which is, that's... Um, how Facebook works, I guess. It is how Facebook works. That's very, <laughs> that's very true. Just have a few minutes remaining this morning, Pip Howard, who is the lactation um, consultant at San Juan Regional Medical Center. We are talking about all the things that you and your staff do to help new moms and other 
any mom, really. Yes. I keep saying new moms, but it's really any mom. Any mom. At uh, the hospital when they're giving birth to a new baby and some of the benefits, all of the benefits of breastfeeding and another thing that you have and that you hand out, I guess, to all, all moms who come is, is something that we're showing on the screen right now is the baby-friendly birth experience. So yes, we developed a one-page handout because it is a lot of information. So we try to tackle this through one-on-one -on -one communication with one of our lactation consultants, right. as there are three of us there, and then also um, with the nurses who are taking care of the babies, and then we also have a booklet that we send moms home with that has a web component with it, and while they're there, they also see a video that is associated with the booklet that goes over basic new baby care and some information on breastfeeding. Very good. So the one-page handout out that we give um, all new moms and is provided in advance. Also, it can be obtained through uh, the doctor's offices, through the midwives' offices, and just gives you an overview of the benefits of breastfeeding, the risks of early addition of formula. As I mentioned in step nine, we don't recommend adding pacifiers or bottle nipples because the mechanisms of bottle feeding are very, very different than the mechanisms of breastfeeding. Bottle feeding is a much more passive experience for the baby, so the baby has to do very little to get the milk. So if you give a baby a lot of bottles early on, they tend to expect that when they open their mouth, someone's going to give them food. Mm -hmm. Whereas a breastfeeding baby, it's a very dynamic experience, and they have to participate actively and work with the mom in order to latch on correctly. And I think that is many, many times some moms will give up because the baby doesn't latch well and they need a little extra help teaching mom and baby how to get a good latch, how, how to get baby um, engaged, baby and mom correctly engaged. Right. So this gives you this, um, this information sheet that Scott is now showing on the screen gives basically an overview of all the information I've talked about. So when mom goes home, if she has time, she has um, a, a basic sheet sure. of information. It has our contact information there. It has just a kind of overview of everything I've talked about today. Definitely, and that's what I was going to point out, is that it seems like it's a nice one sheet of all the things that we've covered this morning yes. um, that folks can be watching. And maybe if mom doesn't have time, maybe dad does to look to it up. To read through it and, and go, oh, mom. look, you can call. Mm -hmm. You can call 505-609-6484 to, to get help. Or, oh, my gosh, there's a new parent group. And, oh, yeah, we wondered about that. And, look, here's the answer right here. Right. And that's what it's designed to do. It is exactly what it's designed to do. So that moms not only can call somebody, but they've got an information sheet right at home to help them, too. That's right. And, again, all of these things that you provide are free to yes, moms everything. and families. And they just have to call and, uh, and get on the list if they need information or an appointment. They can do that through that one number, correct? Yes, they can do that through that one number. And then also someone regional does provide childbirth classes in preparation for birth. And I'm the childbirth educator. I teach most of the classes. The other two lactation consultants also help out with baby care and breastfeeding classes. We offer free classes. Um, we put on five um, in-depth classes every six months, and then we, in addition to that, have Saturday classes. You can go to samwanregional.com to register for those classes. Um, I do have a separate phone number, but you can always call the breastfeeding office with any questions about that, too. Okay. All right. And one last time, everyone, that number is 505-609-6484. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Pip, for being here. Always a pleasure. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Thank you. I'm Scott Nicklin, back with more in just a moment here on KSJE. The time right now, 8.54. This program on KSJE is supported by Citizens Trust and Investment Corporation, providing a competent, innovative, and caring team of professionals to serve wealth management, trust administration, employee benefit plans, retirement planning, and estate settlement needs. Find out more about Citizens Trust and Investment Corporation at 505-599-0181. Aware of repeated and often deadly railroad accidents, George Westinghouse developed the air brake and transformed 
the railroad industry. A Moment in Time with Dan Roberts. At first, Westinghouse tried to harness the steam generated by the locomotive